So I'd been five years in charge when the invasion occurred in 1982. I was pretty nervous, pretty afraid, and quite scared about what was happening, and I was sort of shaking a bit because I wasn't, you know, it wasn't something that you do every day, and you don't expect it when you go into a broadcasting career, when you want to be a sports commentator, that you're going to end up reporting on an invasion of your country. Um, and you just don't, you're not really prepared for it. You're listening to the Falkland Islands Broadcasting Station, and now here is His Excellency the Governor. Good evening. There is mounting evidence that the Argentine armed forces are preparing to invade the Falkland Islands. I opened up the microphone, Peter, and I just said, all you folks out there, you can help me by ringing me and telling me if you can see anything. And the response was fantastic. The people were phoning me and telling me they could see Argentine uh, armoured personnel carriers coming ashore. They, the first flag went up at Stanley Airport, four miles east of the town. Uh, I can see two. Two Argentine flags flying there. Yeah, but they're, they're still fighting it out, I think. There's a lot of smoke blowing around down there. Yes. OK, Malcolm. Right. Thank you very much. OK. Uh, and the governor was phoning me, telling me what was happening at Government House. And, of course, it, it became a programme, really. It was unrehearsed, no producer, no researchers, no background information, nothing. That's all for now. I that's that's the governor again. And you'll talk to them, will you, sir? Uh, but I'm not walking out. I'm not surrendering to the bloody arches, um, uh, Patrick. Certainly not. <laughs> Fantastic. Well done, sir. Thank you. Bye. Bye. And then the Argentines phoned in because they wanted to organise a surrender... Um, so suddenly I was there telling people where to go with white flags to meet outside in the, the town hall, in the centre of the town, opposite the Catholic Church. We have heard your message very clearly. Radio Malvinas Radio, important Stanley, this is the Argentina Army Force. And in between times we were just playing music, any, anything. And we played odd things like um, yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. And uh, on another occasion, strangers in the night. And people really thought that I'd chosen these tracks, and I hadn't. And the BBC even made a programme called Strangers in the Night. And because they were convinced that, that it, was, it was chosen, and it, it wasn't at all. Well, now I'm going to tell you something about the weather. Yeah, don't be surprised, but I'm going to tell you that it's in Stanley here this morning. It's a beautiful morning. It's overcast, the clouds high. It's not a breath of fresh air. Very, very, well, there's some fresh air, but there's no wind. But I think it must have been at, well, at least 9 o'clock or 9.30 in the morning before they actually walked into the radio station. So this was about three hours of daylight by then, or perhaps a little more. And it was a bit of a surprise to me that they hadn't actually got to the radio station earlier. Now, the, the situation, as you might hear, is that the radio station has now been um, taken over. Just a minute. If you, if you take the gun out of my back, I'm going to transmit that to you. If you take the gun away. But I'm not speaking with the gun in my back. Malvinas, April the 2nd, 1982. Argentinians let you continue the program. Yeah, they, they sort of accepted that I was still in touch with the governor and that, um, that the governor could still be heard, you know, although he had been virtually relieved of his duties, but to us he was still the governor. And that's what I kept saying to him, well, the governor's got to go on now. So, so they, they sort of went ahead and let me do it, let me put the governor on, yeah. Hello? Yes, sir? So, yeah, I've just been taken over by the Argentines. Um, His Excellency the Governor is, is on the line now, and he's going to speak to you. Uh, hello, um, uh, Governors and Islanders. I hope that you can hear me on the phone. If we had anything like comparable force, we'd have thrown them back into the sea. Um, yes, sir. What action do you think the British government might take at this moment, sir? Well, uh, I, I, 
some direction now, sir, of what I should do? Should I should I obey here in the radio? Would obey these people? I just kept coming in, except for the last three days, um, the, the 12th, 13th and 14th, because it was just too dangerous. And then suddenly on the 14th of June, in the morning, it suddenly went deathly quiet. We'd been liberated. Brilliant. What did you do after? Point of order, the Prime Minister. Yeah. On a point of order, Mr. Speaker, may I give the House the latest information about the Battle of the Falklands? After successful attacks last night, General Moore decided to press forward. The Argentinians retreated. Our forces reached the outskirts of Port Stanley. Large numbers of Argentine soldiers threw down their weapons. They are reported to be flying white flags over Port Stanley. <laughs> Our troops have been ordered not to fire except in self-defense. Talks are now in progress between General Menendez and our Deputy Commander, Brigadier Waters, about the surrender of the Argentine forces on East and West Falklands. Yeah. I will report further to the House tomorrow. Yeah. We're on our way. We are on twenty two. Hear the roar of the red, white, and blue. This time, more than any other time, this time, we're gonna find a way. Find a way to get away this time.
travel and much have I seen dark distant mountains with valleys of green as painted deserts the sun sets on fire as he carries me home to the mall of
Anything could happen. Anything could happen. Anything could happen. Anything could happen. 